This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. Let's welcome Good Shop and thank them for supporting Disturbed. Go to goodshop.com slash disturbedpod120 and use code disturbedpod120 to get $120 off across your first four boxes. This content may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion advised. I believe then, as I do now, that these places are not haunted, but it is me that attracts these entities. They follow me wherever I go, and the seances, the salting and speaking to the spirits, nothing ever works for me. I looked back and locked eyes with this crazy guy once again. I came to a startling realization that our only option was to keep running and try to get inside our apartment and close the door before he got there. From Killer Podcasts, true tales of horror, bizarre happenings, unexplainable events, this is Disturbed. Hello, and welcome back to the show. This week, we're bringing you three real stories that will confound and horrify you. So sit back, listen closely, and dive into the horror. First, a story narrated by Maggie Kennedy about the guy who chases you up the stairs. This happened to me and my current boyfriend probably two years ago. We lived in a city that had a main downtown area, but a pretty immediate suburb and rural area immediately outside the city. The main city is pretty liberal, but once you get out into the county, it can become quite the opposite. Because of that dichotomy, the main city, and especially the downtown area, has a pretty bad homeless population, which has only gotten worse over the years. For the most part, the homeless population is pretty harmless. They know the good spots to hang out, and a lot of times they don't ask for anything. They just smile at you. I always smile back and you go on your way, maybe parting with some spare change or pocket cash. Sadly, there have been an increasing number of incidents in the last few years. More drugs and overdoses on the streets is my guess. I was living downtown at the time, just recently graduating from college and wanting to be close to the nightlife. My best friend from college and I were roommates. We had an apartment in a building in the center of the city. It was the perfect setup. My boyfriend, let's call him Jack, lived around six blocks away, a 10 minute walk, give or take. It was even closer to the heart of downtown as well. So you can imagine how convenient that made it for hanging out. No cars needed, no parking to worry about. One overcast Sunday morning, my boyfriend and I woke up at my place and decided to walk over to his so that he could grab some things. We had walked the majority of the way. It really was a normal sidewalk stroll. We were on the right side of the road with the street to our left. We are not one minute away from my boyfriend's place when I notice something ahead that makes me feel a bit uneasy. First off, there's a guy walking in front of us in the same direction we are with his back to us. I can see he has both earbuds in. He's walking at about the same pace as us, so we aren't about to run into him or anything. In front of him, facing and walking towards all of us, is a different guy. He had a small frame, maybe 5'8", and was wearing dark pants, a red sweatshirt with the hood up, and a backpack. Even though his hood was up, I could see his face. 
Some short black hair poked out around his pale face, and he had these black, beady, crazy eyes that I'll never forget. I assumed him to be homeless, as it was an area that was popular for them. He wasn't looking at us at that point, but rather the pedestrian with earbuds in, who happened to be closer to him and in front of us. All of a sudden, I see the homeless guy run and quite literally rush the pedestrian in front of us like ran up and then stopped about a half foot from this poor dude's face. Since the guy had his headphones in, he probably just wanted to mind his own business and walk home quietly. He was clearly taken by surprise and stopped and took one of his earbuds out to see what this crazy dude wanted. I may have been accused of being a risk taker before, but I don't like putting myself in the wrong place when I don't need to be. This freaked me out and I didn't want the guy to notice us and come at us next. So I stepped left off the sidewalk into the street. There was a pretty big lane of parked cars on the street, so I conveniently hid myself from view behind a car as I continued walking. I heard this guy start yelling obscenities at this poor pedestrian. I'm gonna run you over with my car. I'm gonna find you. Like I said, we were not 100 feet from the entrance to my boyfriend's apartment at this point. And after witnessing that, I just wanted to be inside. My boyfriend had continued walking on the sidewalk. And after I reappeared next to him from the street, we turned right towards the apartment. Now, the apartment did have a main entrance from the street side on the sidewalk, but my boyfriend had just moved in and didn't have the code for the front door yet. All he had was his fob to the parking garage that led to the stairwell up to the building. We walked up to the parking garage door and clicked the button and entered under the door. I hadn't looked behind me at this point, but a lot of times if you ignore people, they will in turn not bother you. So I was kind of following that tactic at the moment. The garage door was open and we went inside. My boyfriend clicked the button to close it. We started the short walk to the door to the stairwell. The garage door was nearly closed. I don't know what prompted me to look back, but I did. What I saw still gives me the chills today. It was the homeless guy from the street, squeezing under the garage door while he still could. I remember the chill that ran down my spine as I locked eyes with him. And I yelled at my boyfriend, Jack, he's following us. I'm not sure what I expected my boyfriend to do, but he pushed the door to the stairwell open and started running. That was the oh shit moment when I realized this guy had access inside because the door to the stairwell didn't require a fob or have a lock. Me, definitely not wanting to be the closest one to this guy, took off running after my boyfriend. So I pushed the door open and got inside the stairwell. I could hear the guy behind me doing the same as it was swinging back closed. I looked back and locked eyes with this crazy guy once again. I came to a startling realization that our only option was to keep running and try to get inside our apartment and close the door before he got there. Sure, this guy was smaller, but he had a backpack and I had no idea if he had a knife or a gun in there. Why else would you chase two people and outnumber yourself if you didn't think you could take us? My boyfriend lived on the third floor and we proceeded to sprint up three flights of stairs. I could hear this guy's pounding footsteps behind me but at last we got to our level and opened the door to the hallway. We sprinted to his unit and without looking back, unlocked the door as fast as we could and slammed the door shut behind us. I can still remember the horror when we were fumbling with the keys, looking through the people and expecting to see this guy standing there ready to yell at us, but nothing. My heart was pounding in my chest. What the hell just happened? We called the cops and told them what went down. I'll admit they probably did all they could, but it didn't feel like enough. I was freaked out. There was some crazy dude who now had access to and was inside the building with access to all the apartments and residents. I just imagined him hiding in the stairwell for the next poor soul. The cops came, drove around the perimeter of the complex for a few minutes, and then didn't come inside because apparently they didn't have access into the building. I thought it was strange that I couldn't let them inside, but they left after not finding anyone. It took me forever to get the urge to finally leave that apartment to go run our Sunday errands, but we did. I'm sure the guy was just high on drugs and decided to be crazy that morning and bother some unlucky people. And he probably left after he realized he was screwed if people found him there and someone else called the cops. Still, I carry pepper spray with me wherever I go now. This experience is not something I'd like to do again. Our next story comes to us from Reddit user Unstoppably Stupid about their never-ending encounters with spirits from the beyond. Narrated by Cesar Brazil. 
After 10 years of living with a roommate, I finally moved away from that apartment and into the upper half of a duplex home on my own. The first floor was still being used by the owners as they had turned the second story into an apartment for their daughter. When she moved out to get married, they decided to rent it out. It had one entrance via a door that was 15 feet from their entrance, which led to a flight of stairs. At the top of the stairs, the bathroom door was directly across from the front door with the entrance to the bedroom to the right. Going left took you through the rather small kitchen and then the living room. I especially liked the living room, as it was huge and two of the walls had half doors built into them to be used as storage. I moved in and the first week or so was peaceful and uneventful. After about a week, however, something strange happened. I woke up one night to get to my overnight shift at the factory. As I walked through the living room to sit on my couch before heading out, I found that all of the storage doors were wide open, six in total. I closed them, thinking maybe I had been looking for something in them before going to bed and forgot, who knows. While I had had experiences with the paranormal most of my life, I had never encountered an entity that would move objects. I went to work and immediately checked all the doors when I got home, still closed. It was always strange since the doors didn't have knobs. They had a small twisting latch that was very hard to accidentally interact with. Anyways, I made myself some dinner and watched a movie before heading off to shower, it now being the middle of the day. Since I have lived with roommates for most of my adult life, I still close the bathroom door whenever I'm in it. I get undressed and start the shower. When I hear a knock at the front door, I throw on my pants, exit the bathroom, and head down the stairs to find that there's nobody at the door. Thinking whomever it was must have left before I could answer, I went back upstairs to shower. I was alone in the entire house, as both of the owners downstairs worked during the day. I returned to the bathroom, closed the door, stripped down, and hop in the shower. No sooner do I get soaked than there's a knock on the bathroom door. Not a soft rapping sound, there's someone pounding on the door. After I crawl back into the skin that I just jumped out of, I shout, what, in the door's direction. I thought that maybe one of my landlords had come home, knocked downstairs and, failing to get an answer, had gone to get their key and let themselves in. However, no answer ever came to my response. I just stood there, frozen in place, unsure of what my next action should be. Hearing nothing more after a couple of minutes, I went back to my shower. Bang, 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 bang on the door again, this time hard enough to jar it in place. I'm fully freaked out by this point, so I quickly rinse off and jump from the shower. I throw open the door, fully naked but not caring because someone was about to get their ass kicked. But there was nobody there. I quickly check out the apartment, dripping water everywhere. The whole place was empty. I even checked the closets, storage doors, and under my bed. I run down the stairs and find my door locked. There are no other cars in the driveway. Then I was overcome with that feeling of being watched. As I turn around and look back up the stairs, I can feel something up there looking back at me. I run up the stairs saying as calmly as I can that it is not welcome and it needs to leave. I go back to the bathroom to finish my shower and as soon as I close the door behind me, there's yet again more pounding. The second my hand left the knob, the pounding resumed. Wanting nothing more than to finish my shower, I opened the door and just got back in. After a minute, the water was already starting to turn cold, so I finished quickly. For the three years I lived in that house, I couldn't close the bathroom door without it being pounded on. Even if I wasn't in there, the storage doors would be randomly opened as well. 
Once, when I was headed to bed late one evening, I had my worst scare in this home. I was walking towards my bedroom around 2 a.m. when, out of nowhere, the door slammed shut in my face. I was so startled that I couldn't get to sleep or even enter my bedroom. I slept on the couch that day. I tried, as I always do, to tell them that they were not welcome, to sage and salt my home. I believe then, as I do now, that these places are not haunted, but it is me that attracts these entities. They follow me wherever I go, and the seances, the salting and speaking to the spirits, nothing ever works for me. This is just my burden to bear, I suppose. You're listening to Disturbed. We'll be right back. How about it, everyone? You ever get that craving? I'm not the wolf man, but I'll be damned if I don't start howling for a good cut of steak. But going to the butcher that often, in this economy? Today's sponsor, Good Chop, is a lifesaver. Good Chop offers fully customizable boxes of high-quality meat and seafood with no antibiotics or added hormones delivered to your door on your schedule. Go to goodchop.com slash disturbedpod120 and use code disturbedpod120 to get $120 off across your first four boxes. I made the salmon and shrimp recently and was blown away at the quality of the seafood and at a truly impressive price point. Included in our box was fresh ground beef and delicious steaks to round out the healthy protein needs for a whole week for a whole family. And I can't wait to try all the other sustainable and wild-caught seafood. Salmon, Pacific cod, scallops, shrimp, and more. The products are vacuum-sealed and frozen at peak freshness, so even if we don't finish, we can stock our freezer and cook whenever we want. Go to goodchop.com slash disturbedpod120 and use code Disturbed Pod 120 to get $120 off across your first four boxes. That's code Disturbed Pod 120 at goodshop.com slash disturbed pod 120 for $120 off. Welcome back to the podcast. Our final story is narrated by Michaela Ray. Just remember that seeing is believing, even when you can't believe your eyes. This story is 100% the truth and really happened to me. To this day, I cannot explain it. About 15 years ago, while I was a teenager, my family moved into a rental house. There was always a weird energy about that place. I can't explain it, but something was always eerie about it. It was a beautiful old home, and an elderly widow had lived in it before us. She had been an opera singer and a college professor in the arts. Her name was Mrs. Martin, and she became kind of a character in the house that we'd reference often. Her children rented us the home, with literally all of her belongings still in it. They didn't even clean out the fridge. Very strange. The house was basically left like the day she'd passed away. The attic was infested with bats. No clue if that's relevant, but it contributed to the spooky factor that was always felt in the house. I never liked staying there by myself, even during the daytime. On the night of the incident, I was home with my best friend Mallory her younger sister, Olive, and my little sister, Emma. Mallory and I were in the living room watching a movie, and Olive and Emma were hanging out in the den, which was a room off of the living room with a door, and they were watching TV. No parents were home at the time. At one point, my sister, Emma, decided to go upstairs and take a shower. The way the house was set up, there was only one staircase, and you had to walk through the living room to use it. So she came out of the den, walked through the living room, went up, 
showered, and was up there for maybe a half hour. When she was done, she walked down the stairs in a white towel, stopped on the sixth step, and went, hey guys, with a little wave to which we acknowledged her cheerfully. And then she kept walking down the stairs through the living room by Mallory and I watching TV and opened the door into the den and closed it behind her. My mom hadn't put away the laundry she had folded in the den earlier, so Emma had to go in there and get the clothes she needed. Maybe five minutes later, Mallory, Olive, and I are still in the living room. We assumed Emma was in the room too, having just finished getting dressed. When we heard from over our shoulder, hey guys, in the same inflection and tone as before. It's my sister, Emma, in a white towel who had walked down the stairs, was stopped at the sixth step, had her hand up for a small wave, and then went to keep walking down. Mallory and I both gasped, turned and looked into each other's faces with absolute horror. It happened so quickly, but we both bolted upright, ran to the den, burst open the door to a startled olive. Emma was trailing close behind with a, what's going on? When I opened that door, I truly expected to see another version of my sister sitting there, but no. It was just Olive. Mallory and I immediately began questioning them. Emma, didn't you just walk down here a couple of minutes ago? Olive, are you sure Emma didn't come into the den just a few minutes ago? Emma, did you go downstairs after the shower, but then go back up somehow? What we knew, there was no way she could have come back upstairs without walking by us in the living room. It made no sense. Both girls were so confused and beginning to get scared. They truly had no idea what we were talking about. Emma swore she had only come down the stairs that one time, and Olive swore she had never walked into the den in a towel before we all came in together just then. Because our sisters were so young at the time, and we could tell they were getting spooked, we decided just to pretend we were kidding and left them to go back to the living room. I remember sitting in silence and maybe even asking, you saw that too, right? And then we never spoke of it again. I honestly didn't even tell my parents or my sister what had happened until a couple of years ago. My sister said she has no memory of it at all. I haven't spoken to Mallory since high school, so I have no idea if she remembers it. All I know is, if Mallory hadn't been there to witness it and have the same reaction I did in that moment before either of us even spoke a word, I probably would have thought I was losing my mind. I'll never forget the look of horror and confusion she gave me. And I probably gave it right back to her when Emma came down the stairs that second time. To this day, it still creeps me out to think about. In the years since, I've read many stories about glitches in the Matrix and seen some about time loops. People witnessing the same event happen twice or more in the same day, usually close together. I believe this is what I and Mallory experienced with my sister that day. We only lived in that house for a year before my parents purchased their own home and we moved. Last year, my sister went back to visit the town and she said she drove by that house. Apparently, they had split it into two homes to run it out to the college kids. We both agreed that the strange energy forces that existed in that home were probably not too happy to be split into two. I'm your host, Doug Bailey, and this has been Disturbed, a production of Killer Podcasts and part of the Evergreen Network. For more paranormal and true crime shows, visit KillerPodcasts.com. Follow our social channels at Disturbed Podcast on Instagram or Disturbed underscore pod on Twitter. If you enjoyed the show, please consider subscribing and reviewing on your favorite listening platform. Share your own true horror story at DisturbedPodcast.com. Music by Epidemic Sound and by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. Our producers are Noah Fouts and Elizabeth Flood. Our audio engineer is Nathan Corson. Executive producers Bridget Coyne and Gerardo Orlando. 
Until next time, stay safe out there.